So we're here with the InfraTab. So who are you? I'm getting it. My name is Gary Saxer. I am the chief evangelist for InfraTab. InfraTab makes products that monitor, track, and trace perishable items. This is an example of one of our tags. This is an 11 centimeter tag. This is a tag which has an RFID sensor over here. It has a temperature sensor here. We have a battery right here because that's what run the temperature sensor. And you'll notice that there's some distance between these two. We make this is an 11 centimeter tag. We make these in various different sizes between about four centimeters and hundreds of centimeters. We've made them many meters long, separating the RFID from the temperature sensor. And there's, then the battery, how long does it last? The battery lasts at least a year. Uh, for most people, most of our customers reuse the tag about 10 times before it runs out. Now we also, kind of have, flexible and we also have some lights right here. If you watch, I'm going to push the button right there. You should be able to see the light flash red twice. I'm going Whoa. to do it again. Watch again right there. I'm going to push the button and the light flashes red twice. This is a way of being able to find out information about the tag without using RFID. We can flash green twice, green once, red once, or in this case, red twice. These tags are made to be flexible. For instance, here's one that we use inside use, reu uh, reusable product containers called RPCs. It's folded and flexible like this so that it fits inside the handle of the tag. Inside close to the product is where the temperature sensor is. On the outside it, where it's dry is where the temperature uh, where, is where the RFID uh, is. Now in addition to that what we do is we take every single product and we customize it. What I like to be able to say is this is the tag that we use for grapes, and this is the tag that we use for strawberries, and this is the tag we use for ice cream, and this is the tag for pharmaceuticals, and this, you see, they're all the same tag because we can customize the program. This is the profile of a tag, and the profile consists of various different features. The major feature is the temperature profile. What we're looking at right now is the temperature profile of blueberries. Blueberries have a Q10 of about 2.5. The Q10 is the rate of change of degradation for a biological substance. This is 2.5. If instead I was going to be testing ice cream, I'm going to guess that ice cream is about 12.5, I press the apply button right here and we now have ice cream capability here. So the idea is we can customize this information for a specific product and by doing that I have the information for that particular product. Once we gather the data for that product we can get information retrieved from it. This is a log of some data. You can see that the red is hot and the blue is cold. We keep track of the, uh, the hottest point and the coldest point for every 1% freshness. We keep 100 data points. Notice for instance how far apart the data points are here, that's because it's all being maintained properly. Notice over here where it got really hot, there's lots of data points. They're all crammed together because this is a smart data logger. It gathers more data when bad stuff is happening. The net result is that instead of keeping hundreds or thousands of data points, we keep 100 data points but they based on the knowledge of what the product is because once it gets down to zero, we don't keep any more data because the product is dead. We already know it's gone. By using 100 data points, we can then tell you how fresh the product is. Somewhere between 100, perfectly fresh, and zero, all the way gone. The product does this using either the lights or using RFID to be able to tell you not just if it's fresh, but how fresh is it. This is called, the product's called InfraTab Fresh Time. I'm Gary Saxer. So this is uh, really important uh, uh, for all food in the world that gets transported. Any it needs to be perishable item, any item that's perishable, anything that degrades as a, for, uh, for these temperature sensors by, based on temperature, any perishable item. That's why pharmaceuticals, blood, ammunition, paint, adhesives, cosmetics, you, uh, anything that degrades uses a Q10 based on the Arrhenius equation that was been done a long time ago. Based on the, you'll have to look up in Wikipedia Q10 or Arrhenius, and you can see that how that works. They all work with that. That's the science behind this. We customize a tag for a specific product. Food is one of them. Remember, there are four different kinds of spinach. The Q10 is different for each of the four different kinds of spinach. So you need to know the exact model of spinach in order to do that. 
there are, of course, scientists who know this information. We also have a quick and easy way of being able to show you how to do that. If you're interested in knowing what the Q10 of a product is, let's take an example. Give me, a, give me something you want an example of here. Uh, okay. Swiss chocolate. Swiss chocolate. But oh, good, that's good chocolate. Let, yeah, well, okay, we're going we're gonna to call it Swiss chocolate here. What we say is that Swiss chocolate, when it's kept close to freezing, we're using Fahrenheit here, close to freezing, let's say, we're, let's say if it's kept at 33 degrees Fahrenheit, that it's going to then last, at 33 degrees Fahrenheit, it's going to last, um, uh, I'm going to say, uh, 60 weeks. It can last more than a year close to freezing, okay? But when it's at room temperature, when it's at room temperature, 72 degrees Fahrenheit, well, it can only last uh, a week, let's say. Here. Well, actually, what would be a better number? Let's, well, say, let's, say, let's say a month. Uh, yeah. Let's say a month, okay? Because then it starts to go bad. So what we have just done is we have just calculated the Q10 based on those values here, Q10 being 3.4999, essentially 3.5. We've just been able to get, now that was a rough guess, if your scientists yeah. knew more specific numbers, they would know exactly what that is. And now we have the temperature curve. You put these tags, we generally put these tags on cases at a time or pallets at a time. The, the tag runs at about $15 for a tag, a retail tag for like this. Uh, each tag, remember, being used at least 10 times or about a year. That's normally about a dollar and a half a run. As a result of that, you can use RFID to program the tags. You can use RFID to get information out of the tags and it, it, it's doing that. Let's Is it possible show, to change the battery and keep it or you have to buy a new one every year? We change the battery. You, we charge a recycle fee for every tag so that you send it back to us, and then we replace the tag for the recycle fee, basically, for being able to do that. Is this, so is this full mass production? This is a, well, these are these are mass produced. That's right. We, and many make, people are using we them. We make thousands of these tags. We uh, we we have people using these tags in various different places. These are intended mostly for the cold chain. You're not going to see one of these in your refrigerator. You're going to see one of these in your refrigerated truck. Or you're going to see it in the warehouse or the pre-cooler or maybe out on the farm when they're first harvesting the flowers or the grapes or the pineapples or whatever it is you're doing there. Uh, and so that's the way that these particular products are used. Nice. And here the Print Electronics ID Tech X. There's a lot of uh, people you know what? working this in this area. This is a star example of printed electronics. This is an absolutely great example of printed electronics. I want you to remember that I said that there's an RFID chip here and down over here is where the sensor chip is. You'll notice Notice that there are some traces in between. If we need to make this tag 20 centimeters long, we simply print longer to 20 centimeters. If we need to make it 100 centimeters long, we just keep on printing. And the idea for this is, is that we don't have to keep making a different mask for every type of one. We simply specify how long to print in between the two. Now, if you have a product that has an RFID sensor and a an RFID chip and a sensor chip of any kind on the other side and some distance between them, we own the patent on being able to separate the two of those. Who are you? I'm Terry Myers. I'm the CEO of Infratab. So, uh, uh, what are you showing here? I'm showing you one of our web-based applications called FreshTime Planner. FreshTime Planner is used to get people thinking about how the freshness of a perishable is being used in their operations. We have these tags, and these tags, when they start, are put on a perishable, and they monitor both the temperature and the freshness of the perishable that's tagged. And they collect the information and they collect the information smartly because every time they sense the temperature they say how much shelf life was used during this period. Well once you get that you then start to say ah I wonder how much shelf life was used when this was in the field. I wonder how much shelf life this was used, was used when it was in storage. Uh, I'm going to be shipping this to New York you think it's going to make it in time? Do you think I'm going to be able to um, get it there and it still be okay? Well, that's what Planner does. What Planner does is Planner says, before you start, let's have you tell us about your business steps and your business processes. And so if we go down here a little bit. So people type in uh, what, they how type they... They type in and they say, okay. Um, Gary, I'm going to let you operate this. How they background. store and okay, how they... Okay, and click on that so we can say two locations, okay? And this is for, this is for a flower called a narcissus. And so we set up and we say, okay, how long do you think it's going to be in the field? What temperature do you think it's going to be? And then it calculates how many 
points it used or was left. And points then represent... Okay, so two yep. points were left in the field. And what you're really looking at as we go down the screen, you're going to see, gee, I want my, my flower user, when it, when, it, when it gets to him and he buys it, I'd like him to have seven days in the vase so it's really pretty. And so you can see whether you're going to make it or not. So, so you, you keep saying, okay, I'm going to put it in the pre-cooler, I'm going to have it in storage, I'm going to have it in transport. And you put in this just to see what's happening. Then as you go down, you say, all right, gee whiz. Yeah, well, this is bad stuff happened here. Bad yeah. stuff happened here. It got to minus 65. It meant that that thing is not working at all. So, so this is an online application that you have? It's an online application. And how does it connect with this? Because so. once you get these numbers and once you get these business steps, you then set up alerts in your tag so that your, alert, your tag is going to be tracking what, what happened in the field. It's going to be tracking what happened in, tra in storage, what happened in, in, in storage, so that then you then can see, well, this is what it should be in order to get it there for, uh, to have seven days of base life. This is what happened. And so you have a real time budget versus actual, right with the tag. So when you read the tag, it's gonna say, you, you know, you had 10 points to be in the field. Hey, you only used two. Hey, you're really great. So people need to consider uh, how to maybe reconfigure their transportation or storage. That's right. That's right. And then you can compare everything. transportation. You can say, okay, gee, if I were if I were going by air and it took a day, you know, does it have to really be at, you know, very very cold? Can it be in air at, you know, at, at room temperature? And and you begin to compare who's better, okay? Or you get to compare, this carrier is not so good. I think I want to ship at FedEx instead of by my local my local transporter. And so it gives you a, a sense of, of being able to start to manage what it gets to, what it arrives at. All right, so people can, uh, uh, they get, together with the product, they get the subscription to That's this That's right, they system. absolutely get the Everything's subscription included. on it. What is the minimum included? order quantity? Who are your customers? <laughs> no, our, our minimum order is 12, is, is 12 tags. Uh, is something and, and it really depends upon the customers. We say 12 at a package because if you're going into the field, 12 is, is what somebody would be putting on the pallets that's going out of the field and it's not a, a huge dollar value. And it works on we, the smartphone? And we have a smartphone and so the smartphone then reads the tags and um, and then tells you what the alerts are, tells you how many points are left. Any NFC smartphone is okay? Yes. Yeah, and it's just Android uh -huh. app? That's right. Android or Windows? And a Windows. Okay, and so then you uh, you get your tag information. Okay. Okay. It tells you that this one's grapes. The product date was such and such. Okay. All right. So. Okay. Application online and uh, a lot of things that you're working on for the future. Oh, we're working on more and more things that make you get better and better decision making as to how to how to ensure that your products are fresh. So could it be more sensors in the tag in the future? Oh yeah, it could be humidity, it could be shock, it could be vibration, it could be multiple temperature sensors if that's the case.